to Womanomics Podcast. Uh, I am your co-host, Tierra Bryant, owner of T. Bryant Notary Services. And I'm your co-host, Corinne Jones from Freedom Notary Services. Yes, y'all. So we really, we dive in a little deep today. Um, we dive in a little deep today. We really, we really unpacking the soul care in this episode because we are talking about imposter syndrome. Like, have you suffered from imposter syndrome? Let me start. Let me, all right, let me, let me, let me start this off differently. If you have been a victim, because this it's if you have been a victim of imposter syndrome, raise your hand. <laughs> Yes, I'm actually experiencing imposter syndrome right now. Right, me too. <laughs> I'm experiencing imposter syndrome right now because this is my first podcast and it's still unreal when I say I'm your co-host, Corinne Jones of Freedom Notary, and I feel um, like I haven't arrived at being a co-host yet, although that is exactly what I am. So some far destination that somehow defines that I am officially a co-host never feels like it's in reach, although we've recorded quite a few episodes. So I don't know exactly where that comes from. So we could do a deep dive. But how about you? You raise your hand. Uh, if I had three hands, I'll raise all three and all three of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's something about it. So yeah, honestly, I go through imposter syndrome quite more than I then I really kind of understand why I, I have to be honest with you. It's so weird. So one time I read this article about imposter syndrome. So it was saying that it is specifically, or yeah, more specifically like something that women feel in the workplace, feeling like they're not good enough, feeling like they shouldn't be in the rooms that they're in. They shouldn't be at the tables that they're in. They shouldn't be in this, a high position or a high salary or like wherever it is that they're at, they just feel like they don't belong. They feel like an imposter being there. They feel like, you know, one day these people are gonna find out that I'm not as smart as they think they as they think I am. I'm not as creative as they think I am. And it's crazy because a lot of the times you got yourself in those rooms. It yeah. was your creativity, it was your drive, it was you taking the initiative, it was the way that you effectively do your work and, you know, maximize your, your time and stuff like that. So it's just like, how do we get to feeling like this when everything shows us that we're supposed to be here? And you know what I was thinking as you were talking, um, we did an episode on perfectionism and I think sometimes it goes hand in hand. So when you are trying to produce something, um, you want so much for it to be perfect, even though perfection is impossible, because somewhere along the line, you don't think you're enough or what you what the knowledge that you have is enough. So you strive so hard for it to be super duper perfect. And that's impossible because you don't think that you are who others think that you are. And I know in the workplace, I used to think and I was a perfectionist. I worked extra hard, but somehow I took pride in all that unnecessary stress. But mm -hmm. I used to think eventually somebody's going to find me out. Somebody's going to find out that I'm not all that they claim that I am. It's like a secret that no one knows that I don't know all that they think I do. And then um, it's so limiting. You know, you feel like you have to be super duper prepared for everything and you lose opportunities because you're never fully prepared, especially when you move into the next level. You, is there's always this room to grow. There's always this opportunity for you to be stretched. And how can you be stressed if you are already ready? You're already at your capacity. So you can't like move the needle. So I know like, I don't know how, when it changes, when you kind of let go of it, but um, it's always in the back of my mind, like, uh oh, I hope no one finds me out. <laughs> it's crazy. Cause I also feel like that. It's just so strange how like people can resonate with at least like that type of feeling when we're all in so many different places. Like, you know, you have an extensive like work history and these high, you know, positions and stuff like that. And I would have never thought that you, you know, identify with that. And the same thing with me I think people just look at me and be like oh you know you come off as very confident it's very like I, I wouldn't think that you would subscribe to you know feeling like an imposter but it's just the idea that like 
like you said, like you're going to get found out some way, somehow. It's, I don't know. It's like you got a, like a dirty little secret or something that you're like, <laughs> that you're trying to hide and it's it's just so crazy because the feeling will literally come out of nowhere because you weren't feeling that way when you were you know creating those proposals or you know um introducing these initiatives or coming up with these ideas or you know getting your team together ready for these projects like those things didn't exist then it's almost like as soon as everything is quiet and you're like damn I really did this then Mm -hmm. you start that am I good enough? Is it going to go through? Is it like, where do you think that come from? Where do you think that mental chatter come from? I think it's, I think it's a number of things. I know for me, it's the world around me. Like the world puts pressure on, on people, especially women to, especially in the workplace and the business marketplace to be, you have to be damn near excellent to at least get in the door. And so um, even being a black woman on top of that, you have to um, achieve so much to be even recognized as um, just be part of the, those who are recognized. And so I think that that's, that puts pressure on us. And then, you know, people that are high functioning that have big goals and are driven because they have a, um, a vision for where they want to go, that means they're not there yet. And um, the status quo is not enough for them. So somehow it gets lost in that think thought process. And then so you then think because I'm not I haven't reached my goal, then I'm not I'm not enough today. And so that's wrong. That's inaccurate. And so but it's always crazy. You know, hindsight is 2020. When you look back and you look at how far you've come and all the things you've done, you like, oh, I was ahead of the pack. And I was so stressed and I dumbed myself down sometimes or I didn't um, speak up or I didn't allow myself to be as creative and as dynamic because I felt like I wasn't um, where I needed to be. But when I look back, I could have been so much more. And so knowing that now as I get older and wiser, when I go into spaces where I'm not sure of myself, I just have to remind myself like everybody has a, has a starting point. And this is not even my starting point. This is just where I am today and where I am tomorrow is not even relevant right now. What I do know is that I can bring the best version of myself. I have enough knowledge, skills, abilities. I have a great personality. And most importantly, like I'm willing to learn. So if there are things that we don't know, we have to give ourselves permission to to not know, to to be okay with not knowing. So if someone, I would cringe if, um, let's say I'm giving a training like at an old job and I would think I would try to prepare so much for that training so that there's no question I couldn't answer. That's literally impossible unless I'm in the minds of everyone that's attending the training. I just can't know everything. I just can't. Even experts don't know everything. It's just being okay with not being perfect. You share the knowledge that you have and and being vulnerable and um, confident enough to say, huh, I'm not sure. I can do some research. I can find out um, and, and, and be able to walk confidently in that. And so that's what I've learned as an employee. Now, as an entrepreneur, it's like a whole new game because your, your customers expect you to be an authority and they don't want you to kind of give do the best you can no they want a certain level of excellence because they are exchanging your value with their money and so it's pressure with that but that's why you have to get in the right rooms you have to find mentors and coaching and you have to constantly be um in learning mode um it doesn't take away those sneaky feelings but it's just that you have to compartmentalize it and i think you know i've tried my best to like put it in its rightful place when i'm going into scary and environments or a meeting with people who I think um, are so far um, ahead of me in terms of their knowledge or experience. Um, I just go into student mode. I say there's so much that I can gain from them. I'm going to be myself. And when there's knowledge that I can leverage from them, I'm going to openly and um, honestly receive it. And that has helped me kind of quell all the discomforts around not knowing or not, um, or or someone assuming that I don't know enough. Because in reality, people don't think that about us. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> they don't think that. And then those who really don't know or really don't, are not up to par, those are the ones that don't even care. <laughs> those are the ones that's loud and wrong in space. 
<laughs> and the quiet ones are brilliant. So yeah. that's my thought on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. Cause, and I had like, my friend always like says this and it's like, we need to embody the same confidence of a mediocre white man because they will apply for every job. It don't matter mm. whether they qualify. It don't matter if they have the education, if they have the work experience, they somehow have that confidence to be like, I'm going to try anyway. The worst they can say is no, and I'll be in the same position that I'm currently in. And I know I can survive that. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think like sometimes we take, we put so much, like you said, we just put so much pressure on ourselves and being that we have to be the authority in this type of situation, like as if asking questions doesn't give us the utmost power, as if trying to get all of the knowledge we possibly can doesn't give us the utmost power and that people don't resonate or respect um, authenticity in situations where if you don't know the information, you're still willing to try and figure it out. Sometimes that that is just like that piece I know I don't know everything. I'm okay with not knowing everything and I'm willing and open to learn. And I feel like that, when I started saying that to myself, especially in the workplace, like when I've experienced imposter syndrome within the workplace, I had to keep reminding myself, like, I don't have to show up as knowing everything. I am willing to learn and I do want to find more out. And I noticed that it made my feelings about myself way better but then it also helped like the people around me and I think I almost started kind of getting like that positive reinforcement mm -hmm. and I feel like that's something that it's like a, a method or whatever to like learn something you have negative reinforcement and you have positive reinforcement so obviously you know negative reinforcement typically puts us in a negative space makes us feel or embody shame guilt you know sadness frustration stuff like that when we start to focus on excuse me, getting the, that positive reinforcement. It's like, all right, I know I'm moving in the right direction. I might not be moving at the pace that I want to move it in, but at least I know, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? I'm acknowledging that I don't know everything. I'm acknowledging that I'm open to learning more. I'm acknowledging that, you know, I don't have to operate at the top. I don't have right. to operate at the top. You know, I could, I could grow to, to, to do more, to be more. And I feel like that kind of helps melt away my imposter syndrome but like you said when you're in this entrepreneur entrepreneurial space it's completely different it's like because you create everything yourself you're creating your your services you're creating your marketing materials you're creating the connections that you're building with people who are going to take or are um excuse me use your services like you create all of that so it's so easy to feel like you don't have enough or you're not doing enough when you feel like you're not yielding the results that you're supposed to so I think almost sometimes like releasing expectations will kind of help mm. with them Oh, that's good. I didn't think of it that way. That's probably yeah. helpful too. And you know, and, and let's not get it confused though. Imposter syndrome is not how one feels when they don't take put forth the effort to learn what they need to learn. Like that's right. different. That's not imposter. Right. You really, you really um don't know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but I think like think about the times like like if I started a job and let's imagine um you're selling something, you're in a store and a person comes and they, or not even a job or let's talk about our own businesses. And you just open shop as a notary business owner and you know how to notarize documents. Um, and the client in front of you ask you a more complex question uh, about notarizations you haven't done before. You may immediately get nervous because you don't want to act. You don't want to say you don't know, and you don't want to um, lie about it, and you don't want to um, fluff it up and act. You know, talk around it. So in those cases, you, you do the best you can. You get information. You call somebody. You do some research, or you tell them what you do know. You follow up and all of that. But you may walk away feeling like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. I may not be cut out for this. I'm not all of these things. The best way to avoid feeling like that again or have an apprehension whenever you meet with a client, are you going to get, you know, something thrown at you that you weren't expecting is to constantly learn, 
is to constantly educate yourself. And I think that has given me more confidence in my business, more confidence just overall um, as a woman by educating myself on things that I don't know so that I can be in spaces where I don't have to be the expert, but I'm comfortable enough with the information to share, to soak it in, to even ask intelligent questions. And that has given me a lot of confidence. So to just constantly be um, a lifelong learner is super helpful because whenever you feel like not feeling confident about what you know, you can lean into just being um, a student. The, the audience that you're around, they respect that because we always resonate with other people who are being authentic. So you do not have to be an authority on everything. I always felt like if I don't know enough, if I don't know everything about something, then I fall in short somehow. And that's just not realistic. And it's not even fair. Like, I don't want to know everything. <laughs> and if people are putting pressure on everybody to know everything, like, like what kind of world are we living in when we're constantly learning? So I know for me, um, leaning into being a student in those times when I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, they're going to find me out. I don't know. I can just articulate that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure, you know, I'm still learning and then I'll pick other people's brain. Yeah. That's what I, that's what it's I've done and it, it helps, you know, and then I, and when I'm out of that environment and I'm like, okay, I got to get on top of this. I got to get on top of that. Um, but I don't have to beat myself up about it. I think we beat ourselves up because we haven't become experts in everything. And that's just unnecessary. Yeah. It's funny because when you said that about, you know, just really defining what imposter syndrome is not, I realized that we never even defined it. So I just quick hopped on dictionary.com just so I can give the people an actual definition of imposter syndrome because sometimes I be using concepts wrong I, I, I'm big <laughs> to recognize I think the definition of the concept sometimes take new shape too like the original definition I hope I hope it's I hope we on point now I hope okay, we talking so about we, what it means <laughs> oh my gosh right. okay so imposter syndrome according to Webster it says the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own effort or skills. Hmm. So essentially, do we belong here? Yes. Have I earned the right to be in this space? Yes. Am I deserving of the title of co-host? Yes. Am I an effective leader should people respect my leadership yeah am i enough to be able to um be respected in that is that what we were is that the right definition we were leading with <laughs> oh, at this point i don't know no 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 so yes i want to say yes because i in this space we're kind of unpack unpacking why people experience imposter syndrome. So there's a lot of reasons why you may feel like you're inadequate, even though you deserve to be in that room. There's a lot of situations where you put in, like I said, all the work, the effort is your idea. You built the team and out of nowhere, the day before your big presentation, all of a sudden you're like, how am I the one presenting this? Like, am I supposed to be in this room? Am I supposed to be, you know, taking the credit for it, even though you were the one who came up with the idea, you infected, you uh, involved your creativity, you involved your thought process, your problem solving, you know what I'm saying? You, you included all of the skills that made this project successful, they're rooted in you, but now all of a sudden, because whatever reason, maybe you're in front of more people, maybe, you know, you just are not used to like, um, this is your first time maybe going over a project uh, and presenting it to a board or whatever the situation is, you almost feel like you shouldn't be there because you don't know if you had the skills when you've utilized the skills this whole time. So I think that, yes, we're on point. We ain't following the exact definition because our goal is to unpack why you feel like an imposter, mm -hmm. right? Where yeah. are these, where these, uh, where that comes from? Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I feel like when I experience it, I, I just, it's weird. I feel like I resonate with you so much. It just feel like I'm not, Am I good enough to be here? Am I good enough to be here? When I first set out, I knew I was good enough to be here. 
when I submitted my application or created this thought and executed out this plan or do or utilize these skills, like I knew I was supposed to be here. That's why they chose me. That's why they went with me. That's why I have those skills and I'm able to use them. But out of nowhere, I just had these feelings of like, maybe I'm inadequate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but here's another twist on it. I was thinking about what if that's what you're called to do? Like, what if that is where um, God gave you the opportunity and the grace to be there and you literally don't have all of these skills and all of this track record that maybe your peers may have? Like, what if that's the case? That is sometimes the case with people where they legitimately don't have that knowledge. So it comes down to belief, right? So I have worked with people who literally come from another industry, come out of nowhere, and they're in a leadership role or or whatever. It's countless examples where you know that you, you know, you've witnessed someone um, um, getting in a new position or a new opportunity and they may not be experienced like someone else. And and I don't know how they may feel, but we may have these judgments against them. Oh, they're not, you know, politicians. They don't have enough knowledge. They don't have a track record of this or that. Um, but I wonder on the inside, I'm sure there are moments when they think, depending on the person, like, do I know enough? Do I have enough? And so what's the difference that happens that makes them, that allows them to be successful and resilient? And so I think it comes down to believing in yourself. Like we're all capable of learning. We're all capable of growing. We're all capable of connecting with other people and aligning ourselves um, in environments that can feed us everything that we need. And so who's to say that that can't be the starting point for growth and success? You know, everyone doesn't have the same resume, the same perfect picture, perfect experience, but that does not mean that they don't belong exactly where they are. And so when we have opportunities and, and incredible miracles and blessings where we're placed in positions is like, did I even earn this? Like <laughs> I didn't, I skipped all these steps. Like God placed this opportunity in my lap and it was, and it's just for me. Then I have to believe that everything that I need at the right time and the right place and in the right moment will happen as it's intended to. So that comes down to, for me, my faith and my belief that it's going to work out for, for my highest good. And, and sometimes that's literally all you have. That's everything you need <laughs> to overcome because you just, life is just not straightforward. One thing in front of the other. So picture perfect. It's all these zigzags and twists and turns. And maybe that's why we're told that everything is supposed to happen in this methodical way, but that's just not how life is. So we ended up being in these positions where we always are like, well, did I earn it? Did I earn it? Because some standard out there says that it has, the success looks like this. But success for me is going to look really different than success for you. So we have to like start to, girl, I'm preaching to myself. I'm, I'm okay. pouring it in just now because I'm like, okay. I need to apply this to my life. <laughs> it just dawned on me like, okay, pour in, Corinne. But we have to like set our own like measurements against ourselves, our yeah. own lane and say, okay, you know, you haven't learned this yet, or you have, you do deserve to be here because of all of the amazing things that you have and amazing things, you know, amazing person that you are. So what can you do to get to the level where you feel more comfortable? And it's not perfection. All right. It's connecting with other people and all the other things I said. So what's your thoughts on that? So first of all, that was good. <laughs> Secondly, I want to say, like, when I tell you guys, we started this podcast because we had these conversations with ourselves, well, between us, but then we realized that we'd be talking to ourselves, like, it's right, like, all right. right, that's how you know, you just kind of like, you're, you're making progress because you're able to, to talk yourself out of a former belief of yourself all by yourself mm -hmm. that's when you know that you're growing in your mindset when you're not looking for outside things to bring you back on track to where you know you're supposed to be to pick you up to basically reframe that limit that limiting mindset like the goal is that you learn how to do these things for yourself we just want to provide you with some tools that we use but I would say just to piggyback off of what you said, I think for me, when it comes to me combating imposter syndrome, I have to remind myself, like you said, 
God gave me this idea. He gave me this level of creativity. He gave me this skill set. He gave me these opportunities to network. He gave me these opportunities to have conversations with these people who are ahead of me, who are above me, who have been in this game longer. So one that I can learn from them, right? And cut, cut that learning curve, cut that learning curve and learn accurately. A lot of times we want to do everything self-paced, self-taught, YouTube University, all of those things are really good, but sometimes you need to get in the rooms with certain people who are ahead of you. And then once you get into that room, like, you know, that's how you're going to propel and succeed, right? But once you get into the room, you just be like, should I be here? If you made it in the room, you're supposed to be there. That's it. That's and you know, speech. you was talking to me last week because I was like, there was a particular room I was afraid to be in. <laughs> and you was like, uh, I'm going to need you to show up consistently. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you're right. And sometimes that's what you need when you, I mean, you don't, sometimes it's, it's not enough for us to big ourselves up. And that's why it's a community of people out here. You have to create your own community of support. And, and that that's can literally propel you in terms of your confidence, belief in yourself. Like, even if you just mimic confidence that other people have the belief in their selves it will just rub off on you so it's not always about um developing this strong internal armor um and confidence sometimes it's not always built from within immediately it has to be nurtured by people around you and i just i never i didn't used to look at it that way everything was so independent i was you know getting my own notches and my own belt which created more pressure for myself that's why perfection was a big deal for me and um making sure no one finds out that I don't know everything. But then when I started to be around people who were all who were steps ahead of me in terms of their own um, career or uh, entrepreneurial progress, I realized they're just as imperfect as I am there, you know, but the difference is they, um, they stay curious about life versus um, posturing themselves like an authority. And I realized, oh, I don't, you don't ever have to be that way. You don't ever have to posture yourself like an authority. You know what you know. And there's never, even like the experts out here, there's always going to be something that they don't know because the world is constantly evolving and changing. So you'll never reach expert level anyway. But what you, you know what you know, though, and you speak to that. And what you don't know, you learn. And that can just take off so much weight and it creates so much space for creativity, but if you're busy in yourself trying to be perfect and master stuff that maybe you're not even meant to master, um, you're not growing. Yeah. It's literally the opposite of growth. You become stagnant because you're competing on things that don't even matter. And no one's even thinking about it. It's all in your head. <laughs> mm, competing on things that don't even matter. That's really good. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I wake up with all these issues and you start creating stories that you think are completely real. You think that people are, if you, if you do not bring attention to these mindset limitations, you end up have created these new beliefs that people don't believe in you. You know, um, the world don't want what you have to offer, the value you have, because you have not allowed yourself to really look at it and say, well, wait a minute, is this true? Or is this a limitation? Do I, is, this, is this something as simple as shifting my mindset or is he, are these facts? And if you're not nurturing your soul <laughs> and taking care of your own uh, mental health, uh, even spiritual health, then you will start to believe these, these thoughts because they're just merely thoughts and you keep thinking them enough, they become beliefs. And then you start moving in a completely different direction, which is backwards. But if you just say, you know what, I just, because because sometimes our thoughts can be so powerful that it feels like a belief because it affects our emotions. And before you know it, you quit. And trust me, like I've been there. Like I have been so overcome with doubt that I thought that it's true just because I thought it, just because I felt it, it somehow was a fact. And no one said it and there was no confirmation, nothing in the world displayed that I was lacking anything or, or suggested that I was undeserving, but I just didn't care enough about my, my, um, my own internal chatter to get it under control. And I think that's the most important for me. I just want that to be the takeaway of what we're talking about. You have to like bring attention to your, like separate um, yourself from your, your, your whole self, your, your bigger self from like all these thoughts. Cause your thoughts are so fleeting. One minute you feel like you're on top of the world and you so confident and you're an authority, you're an expert. And the next moment you have a hiccup and now you feel like you're lacking everything. How are you going to 
want to make progress like that besides a mental breakdown. <laughs> you have to nurture yourself. <laughs> I know. Child, yeah, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we talked about a lot. We talked about a lot. I think the, the biggest takeaways or what I want to summarize for this week's toolkit is one, you know, obviously imposter syndrome is something that we all going to deal with. When it first came out, it was mainly geared towards women. But, you know, I know a lot of men who um, have to deal with that, too. I feel like they don't call it imposter syndrome, though. They don't claim themselves as being an imposter. And I think that is one of the distinct differences mm -hmm. that I just want to highlight as well. A lot of the times, like I said, when I made that comment earlier about like that mediocre white man, it's like, even though they know they don't have the qualifications, they're going to still go anyway. One, because they know that they can learn inside that workplace. They know that they can always, like you said, you have that, that space where I can always improve and I want to improve. So I'm gonna take this opportunity because I know it's gonna put me into a position that's gonna force me to improve if I wanna stay there. It doesn't make me feel like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me not even try. It's like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me jump on this opportunity so that I can learn. And now I have more skills to take with me for whatever it is that I want to do moving forward. So I think even almost adapting that type of mindset when it comes to feeling like, I feel like I'm an imposter because I don't know that I belong here versus I feel like I have an opportunity to learn more and grow here. Ooh. So I think is really switching over to that type of mindset that learn I want to learn and I want to grow versus I don't belong because I don't know or I feel like I don't know or I feel like other people feel like I don't know because at the end of the day sometimes it starts to go into how other people feel about us when we have no idea how other people feel about us we just create an idea based on what we feel like we're lacking because we're not an authority, because we're not an expert, because we're not perfect, when there's just too many opportunities, and we already know perfect doesn't exist, perfectionism doesn't exist, right? But there are so many opportunities in which we can always just utilize in order to get better, to learn more, to develop more on our skills. And I think if we focus more on trying to develop ourselves and recognizing that, we always say, people always say this, like, life is a journey. And it's like, oh, that's a cliche. But it is, is mm -hmm. actually a journey. And when you learn to, um, when you learn to want to experience that journey, when you want to be present in that journey, when you actually want to enjoy the journey, because all of that is a choice, right? We could choose to be upset every step of the way, you know, when we take whatever you're going in any place that we're going. But it's like when you're taking on the feeling of, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be here, to do this, to launch this business, to grow as an entrepreneur. And even though I don't have everything, I know that I still belong because I created this and this is a vision that God gave me. You know, that really can help with those feelings when they come. And like you said, feelings are fleeting. Feelings are fleeting. One more time for the people on the back. Feelings are fleeting. Right. So they go away and we just have to know how to work them or, or learn how to dismiss them when they appear. So I hope, I hope that this has helped. You tell me. <laughs> we went through a whole so I know. She will help me too. So I hope that this helped you guys in, in dealing with imposter syndrome. It is real. It is a real feeling but they also go away. You just have to know how to deal with them when they come. So, man, that's all I got. You got anything else? The last word for the Oh, people? one last thing. I want everyone to put in the comments what their experience is um, around imposter syndrome and what strategies, because I could use some advice about it. I think we, are, we go through it right now. Um, it may not ever completely um, dissipate. It's just a matter of managing it. And my last final tip, um, that I do use is being so aware of what you're thinking and feeling and separate who you are from it. Because if someone will say, you know what, I'm going to apply the tools that they shared. And then you feel like it doesn't work because you still feel whatever you've been feeling around imposter syndrome, understand that's the same as exercise. It's working a new muscle. So it, it takes time to adapt new mindsets and habits and behaviors. So be patient with yourself. And so if you can't just all of a sudden have this new change in perspective and outlook, at least start to 
observe what you're thinking every day. When you're in positions where you have self-doubt, be very aware of that, that you're literally thinking that. You chose to think that, and you could also choose to think something else. And I hope that will be empowering to you. And over time, as you consciously make different choices that that um, offer a positive mindset for yourself, then it will become habit. That's what I got. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That was good. Drop mic. <laughs> and she felt like an imposter as a co-host. Exactly. Just, first of all, ran this whole episode. I love it. You went off. I guess Shout I'm not an imposter. Shout out to my co-host. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we will see you next week. Womanomics Wednesday. We sign it off. Yep. See you later. Peace out, y'all. Let me see. I'll get my two fingers. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> Womanomics Podcast. Womanomics Podcast.